Hey guys, the new month is here. It's March, 2023. And with it, we have a massive new release for you. For Foundry Basic Tiers, we're starting with a brand new innovation that hasn't been possible before, tile overlays. Using a combination of token magic effects, uh, the new sprite filter that I was personally part of designing in mass edit by Adif, we can now apply effects that visually modify tiles and like tokens and drawings and other entities using a bunch of custom overlays that I made for you. So this will vastly extend the usefulness of your tile libraries. At least that's how I've designed and hoped you'll use them and also expand the usefulness of my own library of assets and let you make your artwork fit with your storylines in ways that it just uh, wasn't even designed originally to do. So like snowy scenes and grungy or overgrown and damaged and a bunch of others. So next up, we have the first VTT releases of the nature expansion, including a whole new set of trees that are colorable and work with the new overlay macros. And finally, we have a huge expansion of the terrain tiles I introduced last month, now taking us above ground into grassy terrains, hills, craters, rivers and ponds, even waterfalls. So wait until you see the, the gorgeous new scenes you can make with just a few tiles. Add to all this some of the new audio loops from Michael Gelfi, and you'll have plenty to play with for this month. Foundry Advanced Tier subscribers will get an exciting expansion of 3D props, so you can now make furnished interiors with built-in clutter, as well as a slew of new scenes with pre-designed buildings in them. And as if that wasn't enough, these buildings are also available as prefabs that you can drop into any scene and then modify however you like. So this is going to save you dozens of hours of prep time over a campaign. And finally, for Dungeon Draft tiers, you're getting new trees and bushes that are colorable. Yes, you can actually drop in trees that aren't the same color and aren't constrained to the color palettes of the artist that made them. And you can also get to see how I created many of the overlay effects in this release. So that's it for the overview. Let's jump into where to find this new content and what's in the release. Okay, so first up, we are reorganizing prefabs and their compendiums in general. So going forward, all prefabs from all modules can be found in the Towns module across uh, five new compendiums, really six, um, that should be pretty intuitive to understand. So all prefabs are by default in the Towns module, but if they are in other modules, you will see that module listed in their folder name. So now you should be able to just type and see everything in the library. Now, for Foundry Basic members, uh, what's updated this month are the Towns module, where you'll find the new terrain tiles and overlay effects and artwork and new tiles, including all the colorable trees. Also, Nuts and Bolts module, which has the overlay effect macros themselves. You will need to use the test build of token magic effects, which I've linked in the video description here if you want to use those. Eventually, when that gets merged into the main um, uh, the main app, it should automatically update when you, when you update it next. And I highly recommend you install mass edit if you haven't already, since it's what powers the new UI for these fancy new token magic effects filters and advanced foundry members should update the Bailey wiki 3d module for all of the new scenes and props for the month. Okay. So with the foundry basic tier, if you want to use the new overlays, I recommend you watch the dedicated tutorial of them here. It's a brand new innovation that gives you all kinds of new tools for leveraging your existing library of assets when designing scenes in Foundry. So it walks you through the token magic effects and mass edit pairing and also macro wheel or a free alternative if you're looking for easy ways to manage all of these different filters. And in terms of prefabs, you have a giant library of new tile sets. So we'll walk through these sets when we get to the inventory scenes. They are all located in the new releases compendium for prefabs. You don't need the prefabs, but they do make it easy to drag out tiles and then design scenes with them. You could of course use just the tile picker. You see me a lot of times using Ripper's uh, tile picker plus with dig down here. Um, they're both free. You can also have all the new colorable assets, which are also multi-face tile enabled. I'll go over these in just a second as well. Okay. So walking through the scenes, you're going to find them all, first of all, in the Bailey Wiki map maps, town scenes compendium, uh, until we get to reorganizing those, you'll still see those split out. It'll be under the new folder that you'll find them. When you finally import them into your world, you'll have these here. 
hills, waterfalls, and overlays is, is where all of these these go. The release uh, scenes are the first five. You can see there's quite a bit in this release, so let's walk through it. The first scene you're going to find is the overlay browser. So this is where you can see all of the overlays applied. Now, this is a lot of overlays. This is everything you see here, plus the overlays applies. There's a lot on this map. If it takes a while to load, give it a little bit more time. I also had to uh, put a, a place for the Michael Gelfi audio. You can find it here. You can switch to your audio layer and actually listen to some of these. And some really great music and ambient loops here from Michael Gelfi. You also have just a call out to the macros that you're going to need. This is just an illustration. Of course, those macros are all in the nuts and bolts module. And when you import them all, they'll be in the, this kind of uh, grouping, right? Including some free ones. In case you're not a subscriber, you want to play with some of these. I put a selection into the free groupings. Uh, then you can walk through and see what they all do and how they apply. You can also see the artwork for the thumbnails in case you're wondering like, where those are. If you do have macro wheel installed, you may have to do a little bit of the setup here. With some of these, uh, these, uh, tokens, it may not come out like I've set it up. So I don't know if it exports, uh, like this in this way, I assume it doesn't, um, but they will generally be in this arrangement then if you've imported them the way that uh, I've given them to you. And uh, just look for this symbol here if you're wondering like, you know, where that ice symbol is and snow and things like that. That's how that works. Um, I won't go through all of these in detail. I did in the tutorial that I linked you guys to. So go ahead and check that out first. And then you can come back in here and use this as a reference for all the different kinds of overlays that you can use now. Now, starting with the terrain tiles uh, inventory scenes, you can see we've got a lot here. We've got craters, which come in lots of different types of color schemes, including transparent. That's what this last one is. It's transparent on a great background. Um, you've got uh, all of these others come as prefabs. Notice when you go and you import them, you'll see them imported as tile sets and you can see the uh, image of what those tile sets will look like. It's very likely with some of the tile sets that when you uh, actually bring it into your world, if you right click one of them, you'll see that you can change it to all the other types of tiles as well, in case you want to just use this one tile and change it around uh, your scene. Um, but you get all of the uh, different overlay effects. These uh, go great over tiles. You can double them up. You can put them on top of each other. I've got this concept of you know, an overlay, but then I've got this like mixed overlay, which goes really, really great over snow or desert or other terrains where you, you don't want it to be fully transparent. You want some of the rock to show through, but you want it to pick up some of that terrain underneath. All of these ponds and everything else are super scalable. You can make them a lot bigger than you see right here. This is just to fit them all in the scene. You have a bunch of tile paths as well for, uh, for actual paths. So you've got different types of stone paths that have you know a little bit of greenery or, or moss in between them and some that are just totally transparent so you can put them on different kinds of backgrounds and have them work you got some of these paths that look that work really well when you put them on grass and other things which you guys can see how i use these in some of the sample scenes if you're ever wondering where the tiles themselves are if you prefer to just use the tile picker just open one of these up and you can see the destination um, you know you can see the path i recommend you like put it into a notepad somewhere but you can see it's in the premium towns, maps, wilderness, and then creators folder, for example, which is where these are. Here's the first part of the Hills release. You can see these are really attractive, really flexible, kind of rocky, hilly terrains. Uh, again, you can blow them up quite a bit bigger than this. Uh, I actually used AI to be able to upscale these um, so that you can use them in a lot of different places. You have all these different stone circles and you'll see some sample scenes where these are in play. And again, these all come as prefab. So you'll see these, you know, listed here. Here's like some of the uh, Rocky Hills uh, part one. Here's part two. Here's some that are grassy, which if we scroll a little bit further down, you can see you can drop in these really nice tiles that have sort of a um, you know large grassy area in the middle with rocks around them. And they work super well in conjunction with each other. Here's some that look more like a deserty type of hilly landscape and just kind of depending on what motif that you're trying to get to. Here's another set of uh, terrain tiles. Um, a lot of these are not in prefabs. You want to just come in here and look for this 
uh, this path to see where they're located, you can use these just to drop in and start a scene, right? So just starting a scene that looks like this is very flexible, drop in some trees, a camp plate, uh, campfire, and you're ready to go. You can also use some of the paths and overlays that I uh, showed you guys before, but just lots of different kinds of things that you can play with. Now, some of them are in overlay format where you can drop them onto other types of terrain. And what I did with those is I just grouped them all into one, um, you know, highly flexible prefab. And if you right click that prefab, you see all of these sort of mixed transparent overlays. Some of these are cropped at the edges. So they only really work if they are blown up at least to the size, um, you know, of your scene, you can make them certainly bigger than the edges of your scene, but you can see there's just like really flexible, interesting things. Right. And depending if you have a snowy background, this one that has a green background can suddenly be snowy or desert and things like that. I also gave you all of these, uh, wilderness terrain, Rocky overlays where you get like really rocky and then you get completely transparent and then you get these sort of mixed ones where the rock comes through but it'll still pick up some of the uh, underlying texture uh, down below you can double these up throw them on top of each other um, they they just work in lots of different ways if you want to just create a rocky uh, terrain in general and i love them um, let's see what kind of maps you guys can make with these and finally, we have waterfalls and streams. So the waterfalls are also uh, really lovely, uh, be able to uh, link them together, just like with the other terrains. These can go um, quite a bit larger. I've got some of these waterfalls cut out, so you can put them in the middle of streams or have them link uh, waterfalls to each other if you want to have them kind of cascading down like you see this one. And, and then, you, of course, you've got the rivers and streams themselves. Also, just like tiles, um, you've seen me use these rivers also as... Um, with the new overlay effects filter so that you can have these rivers kind of show up on any tile, rotate them, resize them. They link together really, really well. So you can have them merge together and be able to make these, uh, you know, these rivers that uh, can go across entire uh, scenes and you can see some of the sample scenes exactly how I do this and how you make these rivers link together. And with that, let's look at some of the scenes made with all of these new assets. This is the circle ruins grassy. So this is using some of these uh, circles to kind of lay about in this uh, in this map here. And you know, if I go into here, I can show you right. So this is just a regular um, terrain tile. If I drag it around, you can see that there's nothing special about it. It's just sort of flat terrain, but it has enabled on it this token magic effects sprite. And you can see there's actually other token magic effects things here that I have uh, uh, turned off. But if I want to go to, for example, this river sprite and turn it back on, this river sprite is actually using the path. So I have a stone path uh, running through it if, just to show you guys how you can use things like that. But here I've got those grassy hills and I can enable and disable them. I can make them larger or smaller. And this just shows you how flexible these hills are. These happen to be just rotated in a way that I thought uh, was interesting and, and could allow uh, players to kind of travel through the map. But there's walls here that prevent them from like seeing past there. So you could have some interesting things going on in this map. I wanted to show you then what snowy looks like. So this is the same exact map, but instead of a grass, um, texture i used a snowy texture and it just shows you how flexible these tiles are to really kind of pick up that background you can add more frost and other things on top of this but this gives you a good starting point point. and remember you can add frost to you know to these as well and now you've got um you know a magic circle or you've got the stone circle that that really looks more frosted into the environment right fairy falls is a fun one it uh, uses the new waterfall tiles if we drag a player out Remember, this is using elevated vision. If you are on a scene that uses elevated vision, it'll say in the in the scene title. Now, all of this glowing stuff will be invisible to your players as they're navigating around here. They do hear the sound of the waterfall. They see the animated effects. But if you come down here as the GM and you act and you turn these lights off, you will see the fairy falls activate, right? All of this 
um, underwater effects turns on. You've got all of these little animated fairies that start flying around. You hear a, a little bit of a, a, a light music in the background. And that's just to show you, you know, how you can transform these, uh, these scenes just using some basic Monk's Active Tiles effects. Hills, Grass, and River. So this scene has a bunch of the new components in it as well. All of these are made with all of the tiles uh, that you've seen, right? Here's a river tile and, uh, and other things. Just to, again, illustrate how you can construct these. This is a very, very large map. It's got this campsite here and your, uh, you know, it's got a lot of like rain and effects. It's got uh, ambient sounds and things like that. So I recommend that you turn off the rain and other things if you need to, you know, save on processor power, but you can see I'm running about 60 FPS right now. And these new tiles just look great, right? And this is just sitting on top of other tiles and just shows you how effective these things are. You literally just slap it down and it looks like it belongs in that space. Uh, you do have uh, elevated vision in this map as well. You can see, um, you can use it tactically to have players or NPCs, enemies standing on top of some of these rocky regions. And uh, take take a look at how I did the walling so that you can um, replicate this for yourself if you design your own scenes or change it if you feel like the walling should be done a little bit differently. This is the Mount Terrell trailhead, trailhead just again showing these different um, components uh, lashed together in different tiles that you've seen before just put together and just slap down really. And they all just look like they belong. So uh, take a look at how I did the, uh, the walling and the um, elevated terrain, elevated vision terrain in here as well. Um, but this is another scene where you can just grab these and you know, these, these uh, different tiles and you can apply some of the overlay effects to them and really transform the scene. You can drop in trees and tree lines and other things um, and ultimately, you know, your players are trying to get to this mountain pass and onward, but definitely a great choke point for battles and things like that. The orc camp is a relatively small scene, but it shows you how you can combine all of the, uh, th so these are all just normal tiles that have been made frosty and cold. So you can come in here and deconstruct this whole camp and see how I did it. But when I say all the tiles, I mean, even like, you know, down to these rocks and the, the barrel and other things. If you need to go uh, get to different tiles, I recommend Tile Sort by Ripper. It's free. Um, but if you're on the background layer, which I'm at, it'll show you all the tiles on the background layer and you can uh, click them and interact with them and things like that. There's other, other interactions available in this map. Like you can like interact with fires and most of my fire places now they, they they're interactable you can even double click these wagons and have them change but this just shows you how you can, you can take a scene and make it frosty with some of the new effects also speaking of the new effects this is the overgrown temple ruin so i, I just put a um, uh, building from the elvish release in here i covered it in vines in an overgrowth and you can come in here and you know just right click it and uh, go to your token manager effects editor to see what all is in place, right? So we've got it tinted with the dungeon draft tint. We've got vines and grass and damage filters all applied and layered on top of each other in a specific way. We also have on the first floor, you can see all the other tiles and how things were, uh, were added. You know, if I go here to, uh, you know, like one of these, see these pillars? that just have these tints applied to them or these, these overlays. And it just really makes for, you know, an effective scene. Uh, this is normally a really pristine building, but um, everything inside it now is covered in all of these components. You can interact with this floor piece as well. You can make something happen with the statue if you'd like to, but just giving you guys inspiration on how you can build your scenes. Path Through the Boulders is another one where I just used one of those uh, really quick and easy backgrounds, and I added some elevation information to it so NPCs or your players can get on top of these rocks and see a little bit further. And, uh, you know, you can see um, I've got a pond and this, this circle here. These are all just components that you can move around, delete, change around. But this took me very, very little time to create this scene. I even have an overlay path kind of meandering through it. Uh, come in here, check it out, and, uh, you know, right-click and, and use your Token Magic Effects Editor to see 
you know, maybe what some things are that are going on around here. The river crossing is another large scene, just showing you how these rivers link up, um, how I've used these waterfalls as transitions. Uh, there's even ambient sounds as you get around these where you can hear the, the water rushing. Uh, you've got a little bit of creative walling and a little bit of elevated vision going on here, especially over on this side. But as your players, um, you know, they can't really see through here, but as they get closer to this waterfall, uh, it reveals that there is a waterfall there and maybe you want to have them teleport then to, you know, a, uh, something behind the waterfall. Um, so just to give you guys ideas of how these paths and other things can intersect and create just much more rich and interesting maps than I think we have been making, um, in general with just the 2d assets that we've been using. And almost to the end, we have this secure camp. This secure camp is uh, a bunch of the, the pieces that you've seen before with, you know, you can double click on these wagons and change them. It's got all of the elevated vision type of stuff just to make this tactically interesting, right? So it's got like ladders going up into these high places that are more defendable. So uh, you can come in here and play with that and uh, see how that's all set up. And then you can come into the snowy version of it and see how that is set up as well. Right, so this is going to be the same exact tiles, but with all of the um, overlays applied to it. And then some uh, different ambient sounds and, and weather applied. And finally, the spider layer. This is where you can uh, you know, just drop in players and you've got some cool Michael Gelfi uh, ambient uh, sounds in the background, but they're just, uh, we're just walking over tiles that have some of those spider webs applied. And you can see how you can like really quickly spam spider webs. Uh, you've got the central area where you can have your big bad boss or something else that you lay in wait there. And it does have overlay tiles as well. So you can hide, you know, like spiders and things underneath these over, uh, overhead tiles, make it harder for your players, a little bit more intriguing as they come and navigate this space. And before I forget, I, there are a bunch of new trees here as well. Um, you can drag them out as prefabs. I created them new. I didn't replace the old trees. You have access to those, but you have these new ones now. And these are just like the old ones where they've got shadows underneath them. They've got, uh, you know, trunks and, and they're walled and things like that. But if you go to the foreground layer and you right click them, you can see that you can um, uh, go between the just the normally colored green and then the colorable versions. And it's the colorable versions where if I hit shift E using mass edit, I can change them to really any color I want and they take color really, really well. So, uh, and they also have um, pre-applied the drop shadow. Uh, so you can, uh, you can make changes to the drop shadow if you'd like or delete it. And then um, now this one's got the dungeon draft trend, uh, tent applied as well. You can also come in here and, you know, like I showed you, you can add like flowers to it and you can make those flowers larger or smaller. You can add fruit, things like that. So you do have a lot of uh, new and interesting trees to play with that just are a little bit more dynamic than I think, um, you know, what we've, uh, what we've had and provided in the past. So have fun with all these. Hey guys, Swift here. This month on the 3D side, we're going to be adding a whole lot of furniture for decorating interiors, scaled to be about the correct size for your standard one-tile minis. We're covering various different rooms or uses for the furniture, like for example here we've got beds, wardrobes and nightstands for furnishing bedrooms, as well as cabinets and sideboards for general storage. We've got chairs of various types down here for seating areas and rugs to go with them, tables for dining rooms or studies. For a lot of the furniture, we're also including versions of them with clutter. In the case of this desk, for example, since a lot of these items would be extremely small and fiddly to use in 3D canvas on their own, they've been linked into a single object, so you can just move it around as a single unit. Over at the right here, we've got some bathroom furniture, lavatory, cupboards with, well, soap and stuff on it, and then a bathtub, and then behind that, some bookshelves. For a bit of variety, I've got two bookshelf variants along with an empty one, so that should make it fairly easy to quickly decorate rooms inhabited by people who are supposed to be well read. Similar with the desks and stuff, there's a lot of stuff on here that's very, very small that would be rather fiddly to use in 3D canvas itself, so this is all kind of packed together. Behind there, we've got kitchen and general storage pieces. Uh, these cabinets are intended to go up on a wall, but they can work fine on the floor, of course. 
Uh, I've got, you know, bits and bobs in here, cups, plates, bowls, various, well, whatever's in these jars. And then behind that, I've got uh, a kind of A-frame work table and then the same table, but with some kitchen clutter on it. Uh, at the back, we've got a set of fireplaces as well. Very important for quite a few interior locations. We've got a just plain one over here, two with two different trophies, and then the one over here that's intended for use with the kitchen. It's got the front kind of grill removed from it and has a pot hanging over the fire. And finally, on the furniture end, we've got something we hope is going to be rather useful to people. Uh, we've got a set of paintings here, which, you know, is fine for decorating any sort of place. But we've also got a set of painting frames and a set of canvases that are designed to be able to just snap into place inside the frames. Uh, I won't get too technical, but all you need to do is get an image you'd like to use, ideally make it be a square, and then apply that image as a texture to the canvas object. I've got an example set up over here. We've got a picture frame, a blank canvas, and then the same canvas, just with a image applied to it here, some mysterious sort of lad. And the theory is that you should just be able to snap that into the uh, picture frame, maybe make some final adjustments with shift and drag there, and then you've got a painting with a custom image on it. I figure you could use this for either displaying some sort of important artwork or a portrait of an important NPC, or you could even just use it to create an entire gallery of art that's all made with your own custom images. I'm looking forward to seeing how useful you'll find this and uh, what you'll end up using it for. So that leads on neatly to the place that this furniture is intended to be placed in. I've created the start of a tile set that can be used to create buildings with an interior and an exterior. There are inner wall pieces here with wooden frames and painted stone, and each interior wall piece has a version with transparent backing in addition. As well as these here, I've also got some exterior walls with uh, some brick geometry on the outside and then flat on the inside. Both the interior and exterior walls are offset from the center, so the theory is you can just drag an interior wall to a location, like so, snapping to the grid, and then you can just grab an exterior wall that matches, drag it over as well, and you've got a two sided wall that is nice and easy to set up. The reason that the interior walls also have transparent sides is to be used with a recent ish feature of 3D Canvas called Occlusion Link IDs. You might have used the Levels module before and seen how it can hide tiles that are above your tokens, and you might have also seen this works in 3D as well. Occlusion Link IDs means you can do things like give an ID to these roof tiles, in this case, test house. And if you enable occlusion link source, that means that if this tile causes occlusion or gets occluded, then all other tiles with the same ID will also be occluded. Like, for example, this wall piece down here. Test house. The effect of all of this is that you can create a structure here that's got walls and a roof. This looks like a normal building. But then when a token steps inside, the ceiling and the exterior walls get hidden, and the interior walls have transparent backing so you can see into the building easily. All of the maps that I'm putting into the map pack this month are making use of te this technique, so I'll definitely be interested to hear what you think, if this is a, a useful addition or if you think that this has got possibilities with uh, different things. Speaking of the maps this month, I'll quickly go over a few of the ones we got coming this month. So to start with, we'll take a look at this forest cottage map. That's a nice straightforward map for when you need an encounter surrounding a small house in a forest here. Uh, the interior is using that tech from before, so if I pick up this example player here and move them inside, you can see the walls and roof vanishing and giving us a clear view inside. The tiles are quite large, so there's room in these interiors to run whole encounters really. Uh, but obviously we've got all the areas surrounding the house too. And as you can see here, we're making use of the uh, furniture that we've got this month to get some 
really nice and believable interiors for a lot of these buildings. The next map I'd like to show from the selection is this rural street map here, which is a collection of buildings all surrounding this central road. Now, each one of these buildings is set up individually so that each of the roofs of the building just occludes the walls below it. Like, for example, if I take this example PC here and make him step inside this building, then just the walls and roof from this building disappear, so none of the other buildings are affected. So this occlusion thing will work in any arbitrary group. So you could, for example, have different parts of a dungeon be hidden depending on where the players are, different parts of a single structure only becoming visible when players enter certain areas, or in cases like this, just have several separate structures that all act as self-contained units that you don't have to worry about things interfering with each other across the map. The last bit of tech I'd like to give a quick look at during this little update section here is this uh, multi-floor building here, the Noble House map. Same as with the other buildings, it's got the exterior walls and the ceiling and the roof and all that. And if a token steps inside, the building gets occluded down to the first floor. So, as you can see, it's another fully furnished interior here, perfect for any sort of well, large noble home that you might need to use for your adventure. But if I go over to the stairs over here, marked by this banister, the second floor becomes visible. And then if I move the token up, this just becomes another entirely usable floor of the building, stacked directly on top of the one below it and not interfering with it at all. So you could have different players on different levels of the house or just have encounters that run between floors, for example. Um, it all works rather seamlessly. Uh, this does work in any direction as well, so you could make a tower that goes up as high as you like, or a dungeon that goes down as far as you like. Uh, the possibilities for this are pretty good. I'll probably be doing a little bit about how to do this in a tutorial video in the future. Uh, but for now, as we say, it's using the occlusion link IDs in 3D Canvas. A quick aside before I finish up the 3D part of this update video. Just thought I'd remind people about prefabs, seeing as this month we're going to be including a set of pre-constructed buildings that you can just drag and drop into a scene. You'll need the token attacher module installed, but once you've got that done, you can come on down to the Bailiwiki 3D prefabs compendium here. Inside this new folder are this month's entries, and each one is a fully assembled and furnished structure. Uh, in order to get them out of the compendium, you just need to drag them into the scene, like for example, if I drag Prefab House 07 here, then a token will appear along with a building that's attached to it. In order to use the building, we just need to select the token, select the attaching UI here with the chain link button, then click on that Detach All Elements with this trash can here. And that'll detach this token from the house so you can just delete it. After that, you've got the building in the scene and ready to use. These have also been set up with the occlusion IDs I mentioned earlier. So if we drag this PC into the building, we can see that the roof and walls disappear so you can get a good view inside. This should be useful for anyone who needs to make a quick structure for any sort of purpose, really. So of course, let us know if there's anything else that you think that might be particularly worthy of being made into a prefab. On a related note, we're always looking for feedback on our 3D module in general. So like what sort of content do you want to see more of? What do you think might be useful? Or just in general, what do you think would make 3D tabletop more appealing to you in general? Either way, for now, I'm going to hand back over to Bailey and he'll take us from here. See you later. In the Bay the Wiki Assets A pack for Dungeon Draft, we have three new paths that are Palisade Walls, they are a traditional spiked fortification for defending your encampment, a more ornate kind of trellis look that would work just as well in a nice elven village, and finally we have a composite of the two that is kind of a fortified but still ornate version. All of these constituent parts are available as objects as well, and as per usual, they have both static and colorable versions that you can use to tint towards any shade of timber that you want so that you are not locked in and you are nice and flexible for whether you are customizing one of these paths or another structure that you are working on. 
To find the paths, you can go to your paths tool. They're going to be at the bottom of the Bailiwiki paths. They are BW Path Wood Palisade 01 through 3. So you can search for those there as well. For the objects here, you can find all of those in the Bailiwiki Structures tag and also in the Bailiwiki Kitbash Mats Wood tag. A major expansion to the Bailiwiki Assets A pack is also the expansion of our natural assets. You can see we have a variety of new trees for you. They are available in a static version and also a colorable version where the leaves can be tinted to match any season or biome that you desire. There are a few dead trees as well to add into your forest, and these gorgeous assets are all made by kit bashing the components that we have created as well. There is a wide variety of different branches, roots, and tree stumps that you can find within the Bailiwiki plants and Bailiwiki trees tags. You can see that there are a wide variety of options to choose from here, ranging in different sizes and orientations that you can really get creative with making your own trees or customizing these further. All of the branches have a static version, a static frost version, a colorable version that you can tint to match whatever shade of timber you want, a transparent frost overlay that you can use to make those assets that have a custom tint look like they are in the snow, and they have shadows for placing underneath them to add some extra depth. Similarly, we have roots, and there are also 10 new root systems, which again have a static version, a static frosted version, colorable version, and a frost overlay. Stumps, we have 10 different ones that are already cut, and five that have branches still on them, giving you a lot of flexibility when it comes to creating your own trees. And there are some pre-configured stumps here that have a combination of roots and stump. You can customize these by mixing and matching the different stumps with the different roots to give different effects. And of course, in order to make trees, you need to have good sets of leaves. So we've made a variety of different tree canopies that have a lot of different shapes and they have space so that you can see your branches beneath your work, allowing it to be a flexible piece while still being quite gorgeous. And again, we have a static and a colorable version. These also have these accent overlays that you can use to create two-tone effects for different seasons or biomes. It's a great way to further customize the look of this and get those nice in-between colors. And these, similarly to the branches, come with shadows that you can place for adding extra depth to your creations. Finally, we have a collection of bushes that you can use. They come in both leafy and fern varieties with a variety of different shapes. And once again, these are all colorable as well as static with some shadows beneath them. We hope that this inspires you a lot to get creating things with nature and woods and plants. And if you want to check those out, again, it's in the Bailiwiki Assets A pack. You can find all of these new assets under the Plants tag or if you want to get more specific, there is the new Bailiwiki Trees tag for all of the tree components and their overlays, and the Bushes tag for the bush components. The overlays, if you want to look at those by themselves, are also housed within the Overlays tab. And that's going to conclude everything this month for Dungeon Draft. So that's it for the release. I hope you guys really have a ton of fun with this. Let us know in the comments what kind of ideas this gives you. Let us know on Discord what kinds of things that you create. Um, we are going to, uh, we also have the ability to now share community created maps using the Bailey Wiki system. So you can now create maps for each other and um, hopefully dramatically expand what you have available just at your fingertips. And we'll be doing contests and things like that with that in the future. So I recommend, you know, if you like these systems, come in here, start playing with them and start creating something simple. Don't go overboard, just create a, a campsite and see how these different things work together and share them through that new module. And we're looking forward to what you guys come up with. In the meantime, everybody, thanks for all the support. Thanks for driving this channel forward, all the content we create, everything else. It's because of the Patreon subscribers that we're able to do all of that. So thank you for helping us drive VTT forward, uh, for putting uh, Foundry in the middle 
of the conversation here globally as far as you know the VTT that can really handle this kind of boundary pushing that we that we like to promote here. So again, thanks so much from the bottom of our hearts for all that support. And until I see you next time, have fun making your maps.